everyone, I'm Don Leonardo. I'm a student here at the ANU studying engineering and commerce. And today we'll be going through the different buildings and facilities we have at the College of Engineering and Computer Science. And um, we are here at our first stop at the 3A Institute. Um, and let's go have a look. So here we are at the 3AI. Um, and we're going through one of the studios that we have here. Um, so this studio, uh, it's mostly used by a Masters of Applied Cybernetics students. Um, and the Masters of Applied Cybernetics is actually one of the first here at the ANU to really focus on effectively and ethically managing AI um, and their impact on humanity. So that's really, really cool. Um, and so if you're interested in that, that's definitely one thing to look out for and apply for. Uh, it's quite competitive given um, being one of the first. Uh, we take about 20 students, I believe, and we just have our first few batches of students graduating, so definitely something to keep a lookout for. Um, and here in this studio is where they get to collaborate and learn from each other. Um, and so we have a few equipment here, like the 3D printer and the oscilloscope and, of course, computers. Um, and yeah, this is one of the studios. So hi everyone, at the moment we are outside of the College of Engineering and Computer Science precinct. So here we have the different buildings um, that you'd be involved in if you were to study here at the ANU with Engineering and Computer Science. So just a few buildings, so that's just over there. Um, it's the CSIT building, so that's a Computer Science and Information Technology. We also have the Hannah Newman building, which is more for the Mathematical Sciences and Computer Science as well. Um, right at the back there, I'm not entirely sure if you guys can see it, but over there, um, that's the engineering building. So that's where I'm mostly housed, being an engineering student, but I'm, we'll be talking about that more later. And finally behind me is the Brian Anderson building as well as the Craig building. Um, and that's where most of our labs are conducted. We're here at the Solar Thermal Lab at the Craig building. Um, and we're just going to look around about the different um, materials and equipment they have and also talk to a fellow student here um, to talk about the projects that they conduct here at the Solar Thermal Lab. So, did you want to show me the... Yeah, definitely. So in here we've got the solar simulator, which is... Um, basically they're a pioneering plant that uses light bulbs in an array that simulates a concentrated solar plant in the field, which is really exciting because it allows us to do experiments um, mimicking the conditions that we'll have in a solar concentrating plant in the lab to be able to see what the economical and commercial viability of those those things are on a different scale. Did you want to show me where you yeah. work at? So over here um, is where I'm going to be doing my experiments. Um, it looks like a whole heap of tubing. It's a little bit, looks a little bit more complicated than it actually is. But the basic premise is that we'll be feeding uh, methane and carbon dioxide or steam into a furnace that has a catalyst bed on it and then we're hoping to get a high rate of reaction between the methane, the carbon dioxide and steam to create the synthesis gas. So hi everyone, we're here at the new Hannah Newman building. Uh, so this building is actually um, combined with computer science as well as the Maths and Science Institute. Um, and basically this is one of my favourite buildings in the uni, I think it's also fairly, because it's fairly new. Um, and here we are kind of just like in the breakout rooms, there's kind of sofas, a really fun fact. Um, but there's like charging points on these sofas, so I love to come here in between classes and just like read my textbook or use my laptop and if, I'm di if my laptop's dying I just charge it here. Um, and what's really fun about this building is that we have kitchens. Um, so over here you can see that there's microwaves, there's fridge, um, there's like a whole kitchen um, area. Um, so if you bring lunch to uni and you need a spot to, I guess, heat up your food and things like that, this is one of the buildings that's my go-to. So mostly if you're doing computer science, um, this is where you would be based. Um, and this is where we do our labs and um, our tutorials and things like that. So that's just one of the labs that we have. And this is one of the consult rooms. So one thing that's really fun is we have drop drop-ins, um, peer-assisted learning and things like that. So we're currently at the Engineering Lecture Theatre here at the Engineering Building. Um, it's one of the many uh, one of the many lecture theatres here at the ANU. Uh, but it's rather one of the more intimate ones, um, which I find great. Um, I find it that it's easier to really get to know your peers, 
but also easier to really ask a question to your conveners, your lecturers, should you need. Um, and what's great about you know the engineering building as a whole is that engineering students have access to it 24 hours. Um, and so it's really great if you really want to continue that discussion or that collaboration with your peers that you have access to the building at any time. Um, and one of the great facilities that we have here in the engineering building is the engineering makerspace. So hey everyone, we are currently at the makerspace at the engineering building and I'm here with our friend Sophia. We'll talk a bit more about, um, I guess, the space. So this is the makerspace of engineering. Um, we have a strong partnership with the makerspace of physics. So if you do an induction for the makerspace of physics in the makerspace of physics, that gives you a sense of the culture of the makerspaces, which is all about open access, it's all about working collaboratively and experimenting. So do you have to be a physics and engineering student to be able to be inducted in this space? No, you don't. So, um, so we believe in the makerspaces that interdisciplinary work is like the best way to play and experiment and learn. And so we really encourage people from all disciplines and we do that because it benefits engineers to be learning from designers and artists. And it goes the other way around as well. So we're currently in the engineering work design workshop. Yes. Um, and Sophia, did you want to talk about this room and the different equipment that we have here? So this is where we have all the really cool machines. Uh, we have a welding bench over there, that's your red bit. Uh, over here we have like various different things for cold forming metals. So we have things like a guillotine and a bandsaw. Uh, this is a robot welding arm. We have a smaller one back there. Uh, this is kind of our most exciting piece. This is the Deco 5 axis. And this is actually the machine that cut all the last of our face shields. So this is very important in the Makerspace PPE push. You can see the uh, outsides of the shields here. Oh. Uh, and behind the decal, we have quite a few other pieces of um, cold, uh, cold metal working machinery, mostly lathes. So we are currently here at the NCI building. I'm here with Adam, and we are going to see the Gadi. So Adam, can you want to tell us more about that? So Gadi is uh, the supercomputer that uh, is here on the ANU campus. Uh, this is the biggest supercomputer in the Southern Hemisphere. It's the 24th biggest in the world. And it's based right here in Canberra. Yeah, and did you want to tell us about who uses this space? Um, what opportunities are there for people who are interested in coming to ANU to potentially use it? So Gadi is used by uh, research scientists from all over the country um, doing science from uh, basically all different disciplines from climate, ocean, weather modeling, astrophysics, uh, human genomics, people are doing material science, drug design, uh, computational chemistry, uh, really all sorts of science takes place here. And this is, uh, this is the home. Inside of our data center, which you can see behind us here, we've got at the same time the supercomputer and also lots and lots of data storage infrastructure. Uh, around 50 petabytes of data storage. That's 50,000 terabytes of data that we can store here in the building. The power of NCI and the Gadi supercomputer is it's more than just a computer. As well as the computer, we've also got lots of data and lots of software services that help users make use of that scientific data. So it's really an all-in-one package for the whole community, whether you're doing really big calculations or really big data projects. Behind the scenes of the Gadi supercomputer, there's a whole lot of electricity and cooling infrastructure that we need to get right so the computer can run. And because it's running 20, pretty much every day all the yeah. time? So the computer is running 24 seven. And so it uses a lot of electricity that we need to provide through these orange boxes. Downstairs, we have much more uh, electrical infrastructure cables, batteries, uh, water tanks for cooling, pumps, water chillers, evaporative cooling towers. There's a whole lot of uh, equipment we need to make sure that the scientists can keep doing their work. So hi everyone, we've come to the end of our 
um, tour around the College of Engineering and Computer Science. My name is Dawn and I really hope you had a good time just going through the different buildings and we hope that we hope to see you here at the new in future and of course keep a lookout for more open week 360 videos that are coming up. Thank you! Yeah.